Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how I deleted my recessed lighting, also known as can lights. Now again friends, before you touch anything electrical, make sure you turn off your breaker. As you can see here, the power is live using my voltage detector. I'm retesting it and you can see there's no more live power. If you're uncomfortable doing this job, please hire a certified electrician. I start off by taking off the bulb and then taking out the face. Pulling out the face, it is connected by two clips. So just carefully take those off from the hook. Another part inside is another clip where you can actually take it off from the face where the bulb is connected. As you can see here, they're just connected by two clips and you can just press it together and it should come off like this. To get access to the main cans itself, I will need to go up to my attic. Again, other than my crawl space, these are the places that I really don't like going to, but it must be done. Wow. Found the cans. Um, one is right here. The other one is connected all the way over there. So it looks like it's just uh, it's just connected by one wire. We're just gonna take this off, all this insulation off around this area and then just yank this part off. See how big this is? Yeah, this has to go. Before we actually start working on this, I wanna double check to see if this is live power. Yep, so there is no power going on these so we're safe to take it off. If you want one of these, I'll leave the link down below for all the tools I use on this video, including this one. I love this voltage detector because it just saves my life each time. Even though you turn off your breaker, I always use this as secondary just so that I can make sure, double check, that there's no current flowing through those lines. So it looks like this can light is connected by a rail. So this rail is actually holding it in place. There are screws on here. All you gotta do is take out this screw and we're gonna detach this rail because we're not gonna use this can light anymore. I'm just gonna throw it away. I'm also gonna be disconnecting the wire on this. But first we're gonna disconnect the rail and then take this off. And that's pretty much it. And we'll do the same thing on the other one. What I did here is I just disconnected the main source from the rail. Now after we take this off, I'm gonna disconnect the rail as well. Now I'll do this, after you do the one side, this should be able to come off on the other rail. We got one down. And you can see where my living room space is at. The electrical connection is inside this box in here. So what you're gonna do is just gonna pull that off, pop that little latch right there and it should open right up. And should be, and you should gain access to all the wiring, which is right there. I'm not a certified electrician. If you're unsure about this work, please hire a, a certified electrician to do this for you. Again, this is just for educational purposes only, and I teach this for DIY purposes only as well. Take all the connections off. So take out the wirings through here. Slide it right off, just like that. So there you have it, that's one can light off. It's up to you if you wanna keep this. For me, I'm just gonna throw this away. I have no use for this at all. I am going to be replacing it with pot lights. Don't forget guys, once you have exposed wiring like this, make sure you add caps on the end. And I'm actually going to reuse this power because um, this is connected to the switch. And I need my replacement lights to be connected to this. So I'm just going to be putting this aside. And when it's time, I'm going to put and connect the remaining lights with this power source. I'm going to be taking off these railings. The tool that I like to use with this one are vice grips. Um, the reason why this is because it's nailed onto those um, beams. So I'm just going to use this. It's a lot easier. 
yanks the nail right off. Alright, now let's try to get that last one over here. Bunch of nails sticking up on the roof, so be careful where you place your head. One wrong move and you jerk up and your head will just penetrate on one of those nails. So be very, very careful guys. There's no power going through. So. All right. I just yank this piece out. Just like that. Just gonna be smooth on it. Goodbye. Can lights. Now I like using the vice grips on these staples. You can just take them off just like that. Here are one of the can lights. I like to save the wiring on these, especially it's long. Um, these don't come cheap, so this is about, I don't know, 10 feet that I can reuse somewhere. So I like to save this 12 2 wire. Those are the two holes. There's one over there, one hole right here. So I've already made a video on how to patch this hole on the drywall ceiling. I'll leave it on the link up here if you want to watch how to repair those. Now that we got everything taken off, I got this one that can light off. It's time to head out of here. Here is the power and the switch that's feeding those can lights. Now I'm not going to put this end on the J box because I will be reusing this to put those pot lights that I'll be replacing those lights for. Um, so it's up to you if you're not going to be using this line anymore then fully secure this. Take it out from the breaker. Um, I don't have a video on that yet but if you're not going to be reusing this line put it inside a J box. But for me I'm just going to cap off the ends and that should be enough because I will be reusing this power source and switch same on the other side all right guys so no need to cap off the ground it's just the ground but make sure that you cap off the white and the hot okay so that should be it if you guys are gonna be interested I'm gonna be making a video on how to install those super thin sleek pot lights which are going to be awesome okay they're going to replace those big bulky cans and with these ultra thin lights so stay tuned for that video